Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 17 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just hanging out in my base, getting ready to work on a few fun projects for today. So one thing I wanted to bring you guys up to speed on is the following. My pick is getting a little bit low on durability. So I've got two options here. I've got the boring and less fun option, and I've got the cool and exciting option. I guess I'm going to go with the latter one which is the cool and exciting one, by the way, just in case you guys weren't sure what I meant. Uh, I'm going to make it so that I can use RF energy to charge up my pick. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need a few simple things. So let's get started taking a look at some of the options that are available for your pick. So let's see, uh, I know I've got materials in you. Does this have the modifier for the RF thing on there? I don't actually know if it's part of the book or not. Let's see. So if we look through here, there's tons of options. Like one of the options I could go with is the moss um, thing that basically gives it auto repair. The tool will slowly automatically repair itself. but Forget that, I'm not doing that, that sounds boring. I wanna do it the fun way. So we're gonna do RF-based energy. So as you can see, lots of upgrades here. Here we go, flux. Adding a flux capacitor uh, will give the tool energy. The tool still functions properly when the cell capacitor has no charge, uh, but what happens is the, pool, or the tool will start to take damage uh, when the charge is expired. So make sure to keep it charged, otherwise your tool will eventually break. Um, so you can see you can uh, either put a leadstone energy cell on there or a hardened flux capacitor. That's kind of changed a little bit. I think you can put um, any version of the uh, capacitors on this tool. And uh, you can see there's several of them. The most basic one is the tuberous flux capacitor, AKA a potato. Uh, it's a very small amount of energy. We don't wanna put that one on there. Uh, your next up is leadstone, requires lead, hardened flux capacitor, which requires some invar. The one I'm gonna go for, I think, is the redstone flux capacitor, which requires electrum, which isn't too hard to get our hands on, especially considering that we've got this nifty gadget back here that will allow us to, uh, where did I put it? Oh, that's right, I put it on the end the induction smelter. So that's the one I want to go for. I could go for the resonant flux capacitor if I really wanted to, but that requires enderium, which is a whole complicated process of fun. So I think redstone flux capacitor is the one I'm going to go with. So I'm going to need to get a few things, some copper, lead, sulfur, and redstone. Do I have any sulfur yet? I don't know that I do. All right, so let's see where I can get some sulfur while I'm here looking. Uh, sulfur clouds nope sulfur dust comes from ic2 i can throw gunpowder in an extractor hopefully there's a better way to go about this there is sulfur ore in the world which is not too common to find or i can oh pulverize a blaze rod well there you go that should not be a problem for me i've got quite a few blaze rods let's go drop those into a pulverizer here that's the that thing so let's see now it's not 100 percent chance but oh i got lucky and got some nice yeah, see, it's about a 50% chance to get it. So you can see here, that's good enough for me. I'll take that. That'll get me what I need at least to get started, right? Because for the, um, the, the flux capacitor, I don't need any more sulfur, right? No, just the initial one. So lead, copper, redstone, that should be a problem. I should have some of that stuff, right? Well, copper, yes. Do I have any lead? I would think I've got lead around here somewhere. Have I not found any lead in the world? That doesn't make any sense. Plenty of redstone. Maybe I'm just being silly. Invar, dark iron, nether quartz. Maybe it never sorted properly? Huh. I might have to go mining for lead. Maybe I've used it all? I don't even know. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Anyway, let me get the ingredients I need to make this thing, and then we're going to go check out how we can get it onto our pick. Sound like a plan? All right. See you guys in just a minute. You know what? I did have lead. It just kind of looked a little bit different from what I'm used to lead looking like. There's a couple different textures for lead, obviously, uh, and I was not paying attention. So there we go. Gold and silver. Combine an induction smelter. Uh, will give us two electrum, and that should be everything I need to craft this nifty gadget right here. So let's see. First off, we'll start with you. Get that going. And then hardened flux capacitor is going to need invar and tin. So we'll get this guy in the middle. Invar, tin, and that. And then electrum, diamond, and that. 
Cool. So now all I have to do is attach this thing to my pick. But there's one problem that we have. Uh, we are out of modifiers, which means I can't attach anything new to my pick. So we're going to have to handle that. Let's take a look in the book and see what's involved in getting ourselves a new modifier. There's a couple different ways we can get a new modifier. Uh, a couple of them are hard and beyond our means at the moment, but a couple of them are easy and, you know, we could definitely handle right now. So to increase the modifiers on a tool, it is one diamond and one gold block will give you one more modifier and you can't keep adding it. So once you do this once, you can't do it again. Uh, you can also use the gold um, apple, which is like eight gold blocks, right? And a diamond block. So that's a lot more expensive. I'd rather not have to do that now. Your other option is another star and there's a creative modifier, which you can uh, only get from creative mode. So there's no way to craft that. So for now, what I'm going to do is get myself a diamond and nine gold. And we're going to add this on here, or no, here, this one, and there we go. And then we can run outside to this thing and hook it up. So these guys together in here should get me my pick. Now has modifier remaining one. And for that modifier, I'm going to throw the flux capacitor on there. Nice. And now we can see that we have uh, still maintain our durability. So the tool still has a durability meter, uh, but we still we now have the flux modifier on there, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and toss it into something that can charge up some flux. So there's a couple options we can go with here. Uh, let's see, what do I want to make to make this work? So what I want to make, guys, is the following item. It's the energetic infuser. Uh, I'm going to need some of these guys, which are redstone transmission coils, and I need to put my silver in there. There we go. One, two. And I'm also going to need, for the energetic infuser, a leadstone energy cell, which is pretty easy to make, I hope. Yes, cool. And then the final component is just putting that all together, and we've got our energetic infuser, I believe. Oh wait, I need uh, one of these. And then I should be able to get my energetic infuser. Nice. So this is a pretty cool device. It basically allows you to charge any uh, and all items that have a redstone flux charging ability. So if I pop it down here, right on the end of the line, and I'll probably rearrange how things are set up. So you can see it has its own internal buffer of energy. It's going to start draining from our uh, energy cell downstairs. I'm going to go ahead and drop my pick in there. And what we should see is that the pick now has its damage bar replaced by an RF meter. And you can see the RF getting charged up on there. It has about a, a storage for about 2 million RF, which is pretty good. Um, the durability still remains the same though. So like I said, when you run out of RF, it'll go back to taking durability damage. So now we've got a very nice pick that we can recharge anytime we want. Not too shabby. So I'm going to let this charge up and come right back. All right, guys, I took a trip back to that little farm or that villager area that I found earlier because I've got this awesome farm set up making me a ton of wheat. And I remembered there was a villager that would happily give me emeralds for wheat. Nice. I should probably bring him back with me or something, but that's okay. You do one emerald. Wow, how would you guys all get in there? Normally that's something you see in Darwell 20 series, but not quite yet. Oh look, 18 wheat for an emerald. <laughs> nice. Well, you guys don't have to worry about that just yet. I know, you're anxious to jump into that little jacuzzi hot tub thing, but we're not doing that yet, guys. We'll do that later, I promise, but not yet. Anyway, back to my base with some emeralds, because I want to make something even cooler for my new pick that I got, which, by the way, I charged about halfway, maybe, or so. All right, guys, next thing I want to make is a pretty cool device. It requires some energetic alloys, and uh, I'm going to combine those with ender pearls to get another tier of metal from um, Ender.io, and this device is going to help me out with the charging of the Direpec 20. Those of you who are familiar with Ender.io probably have a good idea on what I'm making. Uh, there's a reason I needed these emeralds, because I wanted to combine one emerald with some vibrant alloys to get myself this nifty gadget, the Vibrant Crystal. Cool. Uh, we're going to want to play with those a little bit later anyway, but for now, uh, this is going to be pretty useful for us. The other thing I need to do is upgrade, let's see, how am I for capacitors? So I want to upgrade this guy, uh, so I'm going to need two more energetic alloys and some coal dust. That's no problem. So I'll get two more of these, two and two, and let this cook in here. And meanwhile, I also know I want some, oh, you know what I'm going to need? I'm going to need multiple of these, aren't I? Yeah, because I need two basic capacitors for a double layer. So let me get all the stuff I need. I'm going to I'm gonna take a minute here. 
All right, I think I'm ready to go with this. So uh, we'll use this guy to get one of these, and then we'll use him to get two of these, and two of these come together to get an octadec capacitor. This is the top tier capacitor. Uh, I just need one glowstone in here, and then the two vibrant alloys that I made, and two double layer capacitors. Sweet. Now I can use this thing to make this guy. Super cool. It's a wireless charger. What I'm thinking is maybe stick it under the ground here and I'm gonna try and sneak down into Endy mini Ender mini form and see what I can do by way of getting some power over here. Do I still have my shovel on me that I made a little bit ago? Probably not. Where would I put that thing? Should I put it somewhere? Maybe in here? Yeah, there it is. Cool. So I'm going to get that and some power. I've got five energy conduits. I might want a few more of these. So conductive iron. I think that's redstone and iron, right? So let's get some of that cooking up. We'll say nine of them. There we go. While that's cooking, I'll dig my way over to where I have some power running. Hopefully I can find my way. I don't know exactly where I'm going. Hey, there I am. Cool. That look good. It's nice having a little bit of an underground access to your base kind of area. Yeah, it doesn't look too shabby. I like being ender mini size. This thing's actually really small. I like it a lot. And I'll probably want about a dozen of these. Get some more energy power stuff. That might be enough. So I'm thinking I could put it like right here. So like, check this out, right? We'll run the power line across here. No, not there. Right through to here. And like I said, we'll put it right maybe here. So is this? No, I'll probably want it here. So if we plop down the wireless charger there, check out what's happening with my dire pick. Nice, right? So this thing actually has a pretty decent range on it. I'm just going to leave it under the floor there, and anytime I'm anywhere near in my base, it should charge. Like, look at that. I'm over here, and it's charging. Let's see. Is it charged as far away from here? Yeah, it does. Nice. I don't know the exact range on the wireless charger, but... It's apparently pretty good. Um, so anywhere near my base, my pick will just automatically charge in my inventory. So imagine I've gone out mining, I come back, and it automatically recharges the pick. How cool is that, huh? Uh, I can do similar things with, like, the hammer and the sword, and there's even some other stuff down the line that we'll probably be getting into that will allow me to kind of do this. So I think that's pretty neat, right? Not a bad idea. So there we go. Wireless charging of my pick. You can see it's almost filled up. And uh, that kind of makes me think I might want to consider, well, I'm doing all right power gen wise here at the moment. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right. Uh, oh, I'm getting a little bit low on lava though. All right. We'll be back in a minute, guys. We might want to sort that out. All right, guys, one thing I need is some more ender pearls. I just used my last few, so I'm out here hunting at night. You can see my base in the distance and I stumbled across this thing. I just found this here and I'm not Pretty sure I haven't seen this before. Uh, this is a dungeon from Thalmcraft. So you can see inside here, looks like a cow managed to wander his way in. It's a pretty nasty place. You want to watch out with uh, when you come in here and definitely have some good armor because there's typically uh, at least a skeleton and a zombie spawner. And you'll probably also find some creepers and some other nasty stuff hanging around. So first things first, let's light the area up. This is actually, uh, the reason I'm coming in here is uh, there's usually like two or three chests full of loot. Yeah, now we're talking. All right, so is this place lit up well enough that I can not write too much? I guess so. Um, well, I got a mundane ring from Thongcraft and some bones. That's boring. I uh, got some ender pearls. I mean, that's what I was after, right? Steadfast drone, steel helmet, knowledge fragments are kind of nice to have. The hearts are nice to have. What do we got here? That's the stop worm. More knowledge fragments from Thong Crowd. So nothing terribly exciting, unfortunately. But um, keep in mind that this place exists because we're probably going to come back here later. There's, there's some other stuff that is associated with this place, and uh, we'll see it more when we get more into Thongcraft. Otherwise, I guess I'll go back to hunting. 
for some more Endermen. Come here, Endermen. Where you at? Slain by an Enderman yet again. Those things are like the zombie baby equivalent of Endermen. They are nasty. They don't attack you, by the way. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but um, the, the Enderminis don't attack you unless you attack them first. They're a good source of Ender Pearls, but wow, do they hurt. They will mess you up, even though I had like a full armor set on. No, it doesn't matter. All right, guys, the next thing I want to work on is this nifty gadget right here, the Igneous Extruder. Uh, the reason I want to get one of these, and I'm also going to want to hook up some pressurized fluid conduits. I might want a few more of these. Let's get some fused quartz, which is just four of these uh, quartz guys. So I'll get like a dozen, throw them into the alloy smeltery. Hopefully, yeah, that should take care of what I want. Nice. And then I'll also grab some more conduit binders here. So there's a pretty good reason that I want to go ahead and get the Igneous Extruder. There's a couple things that it can make for us that are going to be especially useful. Let's take a look. So first off, I want a little bit more of you. Thank you. That should be plenty, honestly. And then we'll pop downstairs. So the Igneous Extruder, I'm going to pop... I think I'm just going to stick it down right here. This is the perfect spot for it, honestly, uh, because I should be able to run some pressurized fluid stuff into the top. And I'll make sure that we configure the left side to also be an input, and I'll pop this down here. So this way we can pump both lava and water into this thing. And I'm going to set it to make obsidian for me. So it can make either cobble, stone, or obsidian. Now, when you tell it to make cobble, it'll just make cobble as much as you want, right? It's an infinite cobble gen. And just like in the real world, when you have lava and water together, it'll continuously make um, some free cobble for you. It'll also pretty much do that for stone. In previous versions, it used a little bit of the lava, but it no longer does. But you do need a bucket of water for each stone that you make. So as long as you have something like the aqueous accumulator, one one bucket of lava will make you infinite stone, provided that you supply it with infinite amounts of water. And then finally for obsidian, it's going to use one bucket of lava and one bucket of water each. And you'll see this here. Oh, it's so fast that it fills back up, you don't even notice. But long story short, this is going to be my obsidian generator because, frankly, going out in the world finding and more, more annoyingly mining obsidian is just a giant hassle. So you guys are going to see me uh, making some lava like that every now and then. The reason I wanted to get this is because I want to get for myself uh, the following awesome item, an ender tank. This thing is going to allow me to transport liquids across dimensions automatically. So you saw me go out and uh, hunt for ender pearls, and you saw me get blaze rods, and you saw me get obsidian. This is the reason. So let's get ourselves eight of you guys because we're going to need lots of blaze rods for this. And we're also going to need some ender pearls, some wool. I'd like them to both be this kind of wool. So my overflow chest is definitely getting pretty crazy. Um, and then what else do I want? Yeah, I think that should be pretty good. One, two of these. So we're basically going to want two uh, ender tanks. There you go. Nice. Uh, the ender tanks are going to be especially useful. Yeah, you can tell my overflow chest is full. I have to do something about my storage pretty soon. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a minute. For now, I want the ender tank. Uh, now, the ender tanks are much like ender chests, except they transfer liquids. And if you're familiar with the modded version of ender chests, you'll know that you can have a bunch of different color combinations on the top. So they'll share a liquid inventory. So basically what happens is uh, any lava going into one automatically goes into the other. And we'll see that in a minute. Minute. How am I for roses? Cool. What can I use these for? Oh, great. That's a lot of craziness. Shapeless crafting gets me that. Pulverizer gets me four rose red. That's what I wanted to do. I knew there would have to be a machine that gets me more uh, rose red out of these poppy plants than anything else. So, nice. Definitely want a handful of these. So let's demonstrate, shall we? Uh, we're going to pop off to the nether and pretty much set up a very nice and simple way to automatically transfer our lava from the nether to the overworld. Now, there's obviously a bunch of different ways you could go about doing this, uh, but this is definitely one of the more simple ways. So for now, let's go ahead and stick this guy on here, and you'll see that he's already filling up with lava. Nice, right? Uh, now, if I wanted to, I could change the color code here, and you'll see that all of a sudden it's different. The tank in my inventory that still has uh, lava in there is still the white, white, white code. And the lava tank here is red, red, red. And what's neat is I should be able to, I'm pretty sure this will work. 
there we go. Uh, flip this, and will it drain? It will. Cool. So you can see here when you turn this little knob, it'll automatically output its liquids to whatever's below it. Uh, and in this case, that was that guy. So now we've got a white, 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 and a red, red, red. So I want to make this one match. So we'll go red, red, red. And you'll see that now they both share an inventory of liquid. So that's stage one. We wanted to make sure that was set up. So I've got a way to get liquid back and forth. Now, however, I need a way to power that pump. So we're going to want a nice, cheap method of power. And I should be able to come up with something really easy. I'm going to try the redstone um, engine, which should be pretty easy to make. It's just going to require a bunch of wood. So let's get some of that. There we go. I'm probably actually going to need more wood than that. So the redstone energy is from Vanilla Buildcraft. Um, it produces a very small amount of power, uh, but it's great for really low power machines because the only thing you need to power it is a redstone signal. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is a couple of gears. So you can see here we'll get a few of these. Actually, I want two sets. There we go. And I just need glass. Should have some. Okay, apparently not. Luckily, I threw some uh, sand in here, so we'll get that cooking up. Oh wait, I don't want you. I want you in furnace mode. There you go. That's better. And we'll cook up some more sand while we're at it. That's enough glass to get us going. Actually, no, I lied. It's not. I need a little bit more. Because you know what? I'm gonna go with four of these. So I definitely need one, two. There we go. Okay, so that should be enough to get me the four BC engines that I want. And then one more set of these, because I'm going to want levers. Well, you know what? The two levers should be enough, but we'll see. All right, going back down. Now, these engines do take a little bit of time to warm up. Uh, so we're going to want to make sure that we plug them in. All right, and we'll be right back. All right, so let's get these things placed down here. So the trick is obviously getting one on all four sides. Not that big a deal though. I tend to use four. It's probably you know doable to use a little bit less. So let's see, shortly after flipping the lever, you should see these things start to slowly, slowly but surely pump this stuff up. Now the trick here is uh, waiting for this to speed up and once it does speed up, it'll take about a minute or two. So I'll wait and we'll see these engines start to speed up and you'll know when they're at a higher rate. All right, guys, as you can see, my drum is now empty. I figured that out because I came down to get obsidian and I didn't have a full stack in there. Whoops. So I better get some lava pumping through here pretty quickly. Unfortunately, something that I expected to be working currently is not. Uh, basically what should happen is uh, these engines should start speeding up, but they're really not, and they haven't been getting any power into the into the machine there. I've been kind of sitting here for a while, and it's just not behaving. So we're gonna have to come up with an alternate energy source to power this thing. So I'm thinking, I mean, we're getting lava, right? So let's just use it. That seemed too logical to anybody? Yeah, definitely. So what I'm gonna get is a uh, magmatic engine. And we're going to go ahead and say invar plus a little bit of iron and a piece of silver. So let's get some of that. You, I made the invar already, a little bit of iron. Cool. So real quick magmatic engine here. Get out of there. Uh, we'll need you and you and that. So that'll be the first step. Uh, but what I wouldn't mind getting my hands on is a nifty little gadget that's gonna help me out kind of with some automation aspects further down the line anyway. And for that, we're going to need a little bit more iron and a little bit of gold and even perhaps a few diamonds. Uh, we're also gonna want some obsidian and redstone. It looks like I'm getting a little bit low on redstone and obsidian, but that's okay. I'm gonna get an assembly table. So for this, we're going to need a uh, diamond gear, which is not terribly easy to make, but it's also not too hard it's just a lot of crafting so we'll do this and oh that's right i used all my cobblestone down in the nether mirror you there we go one two three four and then we can upgrade it to iron which then upgrades to gold which then upgrades to diamond nice and that should get me one of the items i need for the assembly table 
Perfect. Uh, we're also going to want a chest to go along with this, and we're going to finally want some lasers. So this is all ba uh, built around build craft, and uh, I'm going to go with three lasers for now because I don't want to use all my diamonds, and that should be a sufficient number. So we'll put away this stuff. That should be cool. So we've got assembly table, we've got lasers, and uh, we're also going to want some energy conduits. So I've got six of these guys. So let's try and put this somewhere that would not completely break everything right um, yeah I could probably run them up the wall here so maybe the three lasers could hang out right here like one two three and we'll put the assembly table here we'll put the chest next to it so this is how you want to set up your laser system I might need a few more of these so conductive iron is that what I need for this thing or did I need yeah conductive iron cool so might as well just go ahead and use it all nice there we go. Um, and I'll facade this up in a little bit. I'll probably just do that off camera in a bit. But for now, I just want to make sure that this thing is, you know what, I'll probably just run it. I'll run it outside the house. And then between this episode and next, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, tidy this up a little bit so that it is actually inside the wall. But I want to get this set up very quickly because we're low on power right now. So I don't want to waste any time if I can avoid it. So I think... Good. This is where I can tap into my power line, and boom. Nice. So this thing should start drawing power for me and allow me to make some cool stuff. So you guys come with me, and we're going to close up this wall. So eventually it'll all be inside the wall, right? And we'll have facades on there and everything. Uh, but for now, we just need to get the assembly table going. So what I want to have is a redstone gate. Uh, a very basic gate should suffice. Uh, it looks like NEI is not installed here, so I might have trouble looking up the recipes for gates in-game, but it shouldn't be too bad. I think I just need uh, some redstone here. So let's take a look. If I toss uh, just a few pieces of redstone in the table, one of the options I have to make is a redstone chipset. I just click on that and all of a sudden power will start flowing through the lasers uh, and into the assembly table and start crafting that gate for us. So that'll take just a moment to start cooking. Uh, I'll come back in a minute when it's ready. Okay, from there I needed to make red piping wire, which is simply iron, rose red, and you'll see that it combines here with the redstone and it creates some of this red piping wire, which is good stuff. You combine the redstone chipset that we got with the red pipe wire, and that's how you make yourself a basic gate. Now there's many other kinds of gates that we'll get into in a little bit, but for now this is the basic form, which will give you some simple functionality, which is really all we're after. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that basic gate here. And then the last thing I guess I'm gonna want to do is probably, yeah, make some, kind of power cabling stuff. So let's see what I can come up with. Uh, I'm guessing, and it's been a while since I've had to work with this kind of system, but we're gonna want some Billcraft pipes and we're gonna wanna convert them into power pipes. So basically, here's what I'm gonna want to do. Um, I don't know if I have, do I have any cactus? I haven't really gotten cactus yet and that's what I need for pipe waterproofing, okay. That won't be too much of a problem. Let's get our gate. We'll come up with our plan here in just a minute. Let's go downstairs and see what I can come up with so far. I know I want probably to make a structure pipe. And if I remember correctly, and hopefully I do, maybe I should look this up real quick just to be sure. But the cobblestone structure pipe is gravel and cobblestone transport pipe. Good. I was right about that. So to get a cobblestone transport pipe, it's just like that. And I'm going to get a few of these uh, courtesy of the gravel there. And do I want another gate? I may. I think I do want another gate. So let me cook up another one of those and I'll be back in a minute when that's done. All right, that looks like the gate's almost ready there. Hooray! Let's head down to the nether and see what we're gonna do with two gates, some structure piping and some red piping wire. This should be fun. So there's a couple of options I could have done with here. Uh, I decided this would probably be one of the more efficient ones. Yeah, see, totally not working. So instead what I'm going to do is the following. Um, I want to be as efficient as possible with this system, okay? So if I place down a magmatic dynamo, like so, let's put it like right here. You know what, no, let's, let's first put down this thing and then we'll put the magmatic dynamo down. That'll ensure it's facing the right way. Then what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, you know what I should have done? Hmm. Kind of want this thing. I want to make this as intelligent as possible. So let's do this. Um, 
pick you up, put you here, pick you up, put you there, okay, and no, that doesn't work either. Let's put you back here. I'm going to need a way. You know what I can do? I can do it like this. Should be able to get this out with pressurized fluid cables. Will this work? Let's find out. Extract mode, always active. Hey, yeah, that works. Nice. All right, so this thing is running. That'll do. Forgot I had those pipes on me. So you can see here quickly the under tank filled up. The only problem is now this engine's going to be running like crazy, right? And we really don't want that to be the case. So let's do a little bit of automation to help protect against that. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to move this pipe here to here and hook that. Oh, wow, that's another way to do it. Okay, that should work. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do now is set down this following structure. If I place down the structure pipe here, what I should be able to place down on this is a gate, and I can control the gate that says fluid and tank, tank full. See how that red line comes on there? So there's a lot of different options we can go with, right? Uh, contains less than 25, there's no red line, because it doesn't contain less than 25, okay? Contains less than 50, no red line. Contains less than 75. Fluid and tank is true, so there's a red line. Tank empty, that's not the case, so there's not a red line. So basically when there's a red line there, it's matching the condition that we're setting. So the basic gate here is basically giving us an if-then statement. If the tank is full, then do something. Now what I'm going to do is have it transmit a signal along this red piping wire. So I can run this red piping wire over here. So what I'm going to say is, um, we're going to change this out, red pipe signal. Ah, sneaky, sneaky exploding creeper guys all right so we turned on a red pipe signal and then over here I'm gonna set this thing up and I'm gonna say when you are receiving a red pipe signal so red pipe signal on which is currently true emit a redstone signal and I'm gonna set this thing to only work when it's receiving a low redstone signal so what we should have set up now is this thing no longer see power output is zero we're no longer generating power when we tell it to ignore redstone it's outputting 8 rf per tick which is being wasted we don't want to waste lava basically this setup as it stands if i didn't have the gate turning off would constantly use albeit a very small amount of lava but it would constantly be using lava and that would basically be you know counterintuitive for a system that's designed to get us as much lava as possible right so what we're doing here is we're detecting when there's a full tank of lava go ahead and emit a red pipe signal and when that's there's a red pipe signal showing up over here we're going to go ahead and get a redstone signal and emit it for this thing to turn off now let's for example head back to our base and i'm just going to demonstrate what's going to happen here uh real quick so that you guys can see it on on this side because when i do this back at the base it won't be so obvious so let's go downstairs and get our empty drum and this will make it really easy to demonstrate so come here drum and down here So what we should wind up seeing then is when we place down the ender tank, which by the way is now full, and tell it to dump its contents into the drum, all of a sudden uh, what we should start seeing happening here, this thing's filling up pretty quickly, and we'll see this thing draining out. Nice. Now this should detect that the tank is no longer full at some point. Maybe he's reading off the pipe under there. That might be a problem for us. Let's remove that pipe. Yeah, see he was, he was reading the pipe underneath as well. So you can see as the tank fills up, it turns on the redstone signal, turning off the magmatic dynamo. And then when the tank is empty again, all right, so that's cool. Now we just have to get lava back into the magmatic dynamo. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, I can probably just do this underneath. See, this is a reason, by the way, guys, why you always want to test everything that you're doing. So if I do that, there we go. We should be filling this thing back up with lava. Nice. So you can see it flickering on and off, which is fine. Like, that's not going to hurt too much. Um, you know, what I could do is say, well, yeah, we'll leave, we'll leave it at tank full equals redstone signal. Cool. So this thing will constantly dump lava into our thing here. And when, when the tank's full, you'll notice that it stops completely and it prevents any more energy from being created. See? Zero RF per tick, and our internal buffer is no longer filling.
Oh boy, where's that thing shooting at me? Whoa, that was close. I got my stuff, let's get out of here. Now I'm pretty sure the endothermic pump counts as a chunk loader, and we're gonna find out in a minute if that's the case. Um, so as most of you should know, chunk loading is basically the concept of uh, you, when you are not near a block, it might not run. Typically across dimensions is absolutely the case, but if you get far enough away from something, for example, if you're, you know, maybe 100 or 200 blocks away from something, all the machines in that area won't run. So let's do this first. Let's turn this off. And we should see, nice, we're getting some lava in here, and this thing's remaining full. That's what we want to see. As long as the ender tank's remaining full, that's telling us the endothermic pump is keeping the chunks loaded as needed. That's good. Normally, without an endothermic pump or a chunk loader or some other mod-related item that can keep chunks loaded, the nether would be unloaded and the machines wouldn't run. But because the endothermic pump itself is a chunk loader, it automatically keeps those things running, even when me, the player, or anybody else is not in the nether. So for now, we've got automated transfer of lava over to here. Now we are still wasting lava a little bit, you know, quote unquote, wasting lava. Um, let's go ahead and shift left click the up condition. We're gonna make sure to switch this back to extract, always active, and you can see lava flowing back in, nice. So we've pretty much automated the transfer of lava from, um, and then we're getting more obsidian too, hooray. We transmitted uh, lava from the nether to the overworld that Feels like a pretty good accomplishment to me. Let's put all these items away and I'm gonna tidy up my inventory a little bit. Yeah, we definitely have to sort out some of these storage issues that I've got. That's not good. All right, guys, so apparently we are going to have to sort out our inventory issues. Obviously, I've got some things to take care of in here uh, next episode because uh, it's time to wrap up. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, but it's the way it is. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Automated transfer of liquids, plus we got into gates a little bit from Billcraft. There's a lot more that these gates can do for us, and we will definitely be checking that out in the future. Um, like I said, just a ton of stuff. I'm going to clean up behind the walls there. Let's actually, I'm going to get myself some more of those cable facade things. I know I'm going to need, like, this thing. And, yeah, like I said, we'll come back next episode, and I think it's time to do a little bit of inventory management. We'll have to figure out how we're going to do this. Uh, I can't really get into applied energistics yet. I think it's a little bit too early game for me to do that. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. Don't worry. All right, guys. Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.